Did you know that every year, the moon moves approximately one and a half inches further away from Earth? It's a fascinating fact, isn't it? When we gaze up at the night sky, the moon seems like a constant and unchanging beacon in the darkness. But the reality is, it's on the move. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, shouldn't gravity be pulling the moon closer to us, not pushing it away? It's a valid point, and one that underscores just how intriguing this phenomenon really is. You see, the moon isn't trying to make a break for it. There's no cosmic conspiracy at play. It's simply a natural outcome of the gravitational dance that the Earth and Moon have been performing for billions of years. Yes, our celestial companion is slowly but steadily drifting away, but don't worry, it's not going anywhere fast. And we'll dive deeper into why that is in our next segment. This remarkable discovery wasn't made until the Apollo missions in the late 1960s and early 1970s. These missions, a significant milestone in space exploration, were not merely about setting foot on the moon, they were also instrumental in unlocking some of the moon's secrets. The Apollo astronauts didn't just leave footprints and an American flag on the lunar surface, they also left something quite ingenious, retro reflectors. Picture these retro reflectors as extremely sophisticated mirrors, designed to bounce back light directly to its source, irrespective of the angle of incidence. These devices were strategically placed by the Apollo 11, 14 and 15 missions and even by the Soviet Lunokhod 2 mission. Now, you might be wondering, what do these retro reflectors have to do with the discovery of lunar recession? Well, here's the fascinating part. Since their placement, scientists on Earth have been beaming lasers at these reflectors and then measuring the time it takes for the light to return. This gives them an incredibly precise measurement of the distance between the Earth and the Moon. By repeating this experiment over decades, scientists have been able to track minute changes in the Moon's distance from us. And what they found was astonishing. The Moon isn't static in its orbit. It's actually drifting away from us at an average rate of about one and a half inches per year. This discovery was a game changer. It not only confirmed the theory of lunar recession, but also provided invaluable information about the Moon's orbit, its rotational behavior, and its interaction with Earth's gravitational field. So, while we might gaze up at the Moon and see a constant companion in our night sky, the reality is a little more complex. Our Moon is a traveler, embarked on a slow journey away from us. Thanks to these Apollo missions, we now know the Moon is on a slow journey away from us. But why is the Moon drifting away? The answer lies in the interplay of gravity and motion between Earth and its Moon. To understand this, we first need to delve into the concept of tidal friction. You see, our Earth is not a perfect sphere. It's an oblate spheroid, slightly wider at the equator due to its rotation. This rotation causes a gravitational bulge or tide to form. Picture, if you will, Earth as a spinning top. As it spins, the centrifugal force pushes material towards the equator, creating a bulge. Now, let's bring the Moon into the picture. The Moon's gravity pulls on everything on Earth, but it pulls harder on the side closer to it, causing the Earth's oceans to bulge out towards the Moon. This creates what we call a tidal bulge. The same process happens on the side of Earth opposite the Moon, but this time it's due to the Moon's gravity pulling less strongly there. So we end up with two tidal bulges on Earth, one facing the Moon and one on the opposite side. As Earth rotates, these bulges move around the planet, but they also try to align themselves with the Moon. This creates a sort of drag on Earth's rotation, a phenomenon known as tidal friction. Here's where things get interesting. This tidal friction slows down Earth's rotation, and the law of conservation of angular momentum dictates that this lost rotational energy must go somewhere. And guess where it goes? That's right, it gets transferred to the Moon, increasing its orbital energy and causing it to move slightly further away from Earth. This process is continuous and happens over a very, very long time. We're talking millions and billions of years here. The Earth's rotation is slowing down and the Moon is gradually moving further away. But don't worry, 
it's happening at the glacial pace of about one and a half inches per year. So, it's not something we'll notice in our lifetime or even in the next hundred generations. This doesn't mean it's insignificant though. Over time, this gradual drift has a big impact on the Earth-Moon relationship. It changes the length of a day, the appearance of the Moon in our sky and even the very stability of our planet's tilt. In essence, our own planet's spin is pushing the Moon away. It's a fascinating dance of celestial bodies, a testimony to the intricate beauty of the universe. It's the science behind the drift. It's the reason why when we look up at the night sky, the moon is a tiny bit further away than it was when our ancestors first gazed upon it. So, what does this mean for the future of our Earth-Moon relationship? Well, as the moon continues to drift away, the dynamics of our cosmic dance will inevitably change. As the moon moves away, its gravitational pull on Earth weakens. This results in an interesting effect. Our days will become longer. Yes, you heard it right. The Earth's rotation will gradually slow down, making our 24-hour day a thing of the past. In fact, billions of years from now, a day on Earth could last as long as a thousand present days. But that's not all. The receding moon will also have a significant impact on the occurrence of lunar eclipses. As the moon moves further away, it appears smaller in our sky. The time will come when it's too small and too distant to completely cover the sun, making total lunar eclipses a rare cosmic event. Imagine that, a future where our nights are devoid of the familiar lunar face and the dramatic spectacle of lunar eclipses. It's a fascinating yet somewhat melancholic thought, isn't it? But before you start worrying about planning your days around a thousand hour clock or missing out on lunar eclipses, let me reassure you, these changes are happening at a snail's pace. We're talking billions of years here. It's a time frame so vast that it almost defies human comprehension. In the grand time scale of the cosmos, the moon's drift is an incredibly slow process. It's a gentle reminder of the relentless march of cosmic time of the subtle and continuous changes happening in our universe every moment of every day. So, while we may not be around to witness these changes, it's still a thrilling thought, isn't it? To think that our familiar night sky will one day look very different to the inhabitants of the future Earth. The moon's slow departure is a testament to the dynamic and ever-changing nature of the cosmos. It's a fascinating journey and we're all part of it. As we gaze at the moon in the night sky, we now know it's not just a static ornament. It's a celestial body with its own movements and dynamics constantly in motion, albeit at the pace too slow for our eyes to perceive. Throughout this exploration, we've journeyed from the moon's constant movement to the startling discovery of its gradual recession from our home planet Earth. We've learned that this lunar recession was first discovered through the mirrors, left on the moon's surface by the Apollo missions, a brilliant testament to human ingenuity and our quest for knowledge. These mirrors allowed scientists to bounce lasers off the moon, measuring the time it took for their light to return and thus calculating the moon's distance with extraordinary precision. Over time, these measurements revealed the startling truth. The moon is moving away from us at an average rate of about one and a half inches per year. But why is this happening? We delved into the science behind this lunar drift, understanding that the moon's movement away from Earth is largely due to the gravitational interaction between the two bodies and the transfer of angular momentum. This interaction creates tides on Earth, and as these tides ebb and flow, they slowly push the moon further away. As for the future, we explored how this slow drift could potentially affect Earth's rotation and the length of our days. However, we also learned that this process is incredibly slow and it won't significantly affect life on Earth for billions of years. In the grand scheme of things, the Moon's slow dance away from Earth is just another fascinating part of the cosmic ballet that governs our universe. It's a reminder of the dynamic nature of the cosmos and our small yet significant place within it. So next time you look at the Moon, remember, it's slowly drifting away on its eternal dance with Earth in the grand ballet of the cosmos.